Okay, so this is a quickie on this. Now, this is stage three of this prototype, and we're done now. But uh, I did say that this was kind of loose. I changed that. Instead of having these uh, basically anchored off a platform, I put this down tight and anchored the whole thing to here. This is pre-tensioned. The whole point of what we did was to pre-tension the bow. Now, what I've done with this is actually bring this point down. There was two inches here, and now I've moved it down another full inch. Uh, and I've done that on both sides, okay? So my brace height has gone from pretty much exactly seven inches, and they actually measure it from halfway through the riser. So... I'm looking at, I have an exactly eight inch uh, span with like this. And I know that mathematically from the past. So this is exactly seven inches right here. I'm looking at it, my thumb knuckle pretty much. So that's not bad. That's actually a really good brace height. And when I wrapped it tight, 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 and kept bringing in the point and bringing in the point until the, I was happy with the tension on the bow, it's increased the poundage significantly over the stage two version. Now the stage two was definitely improvement over the first one. Absolutely, that is a fact. But this is a vast improvement, again, over that. And the only difference is the technique with which I did it. So for one, the string is separate from this wrap. The wrap is about a 40 foot length piece that I've used to progressively go from this and a very flexible tip to about halfway between, see that? There's not a lot of flex here. That's actually a good thing. The next carbon rod set starts here and it's a double set that double reinforces this one. And this one is actually mounted along the back side of it. So in front of it, there's two carbon fiber rods. Alongside of that carbon fiber rod, which is covered in tape here that's green, and you can see separately, but also to the back, there's another black carbon fiber rod, and this is the trick. There's a third carbon fiber rod in here that runs the full length of this landscaping spar, but just shy of, but it's perfect. It comes all the way through, and it makes it so that it is progressively stiffer as you go through the pull. Now, what I like about this is this went from uh, a, a decent little potential survival bow that was functional to uh, this actually has about as much pull poundage wise as you would really want to or need to put out. Um, I, this is so much more taut now, and the whole thing is under so much more tension uh, that the bow actually can deflect a lot, and you can see that. Well, that's good, because that equates to draw length. Now, here's what's happened. I've lowered the brace height an inch. I've brought these in a bit, and in the end, um, the whole thing is under a good 10% at least more tension than it was before. Now that's good. That's pre-tensioning the bow so that no matter what, that's basically what a recurve does, is it pre-tensions the bow. And essentially what this is, is an artificial way to produce a similar effect because a recurve would force these out at the tips, right? Well, what if I told you that with by working with paracord i could now take a piece here and tie onto it one of these solid squared off notches i have built in here and that are locked right in on the sides of one of these pins uh there's a few of these built in and here's one of them here you can really see it it's a plastic uh, hinge and little piece that is just like one of these and because there's three of these carbon fiber rods there's actually three of these pieces built into the bow. You can see one of them here, one of them here taped up, and the other one here taped up. And so that you can see that there really are three of those. And each one of those is a, an umbrella strand, but one is uh, short and the other two are full length. 
and then there is a fourth, thinner, thinner section that's put inside of this. Um, so in the end, there's actually four uh, rods in here. And one of them is the fiberglass landscaping style rod. And they do actually make a difference. See, the carbon fiber rods are really flexible on their own, but they do add a lot of springiness, a lot of desire to return very quickly to uh, their natural shape. And the way that this bow seems to fling arrows now, I mean, I, I didn't uh, fire it yet at this tension. I just finished it, but the amount of tension I'm seeing, I started pulling it and all of a sudden I was actually getting a workout. I can pull 60 or 70 pounds on this bow right now, which is blowing my mind. Paracord like this is, should be good for a couple hundred pounds. Really, it, it should be fine. It's a, it's a decent enough bowstring. Um, I should be able to pull at least a hundred pounds of pressure with me just drawing. I'm actually not that small a guy, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uh, in pretty good shape and I can, I can easily pull a hundred pound bow, believe it or not, uh, when I'm in anger, but when I'm not, it's not enjoyable to pull a hundred pound bow. This one is just at the limit of what I find to be enjoyable to shoot, which I've always said is right at a minimum 55 pounds and at a maximum 80 pounds. And I'll bet you money when I go to test it, it's in that range at this point. Now, it wasn't to start with. This was maybe 14 pounds when I first built it. But by doing this the first time at the first stage from the f from first video I showed you, it was weak. But for a bow that week, it was really, really good at slinging arrows. Now, when I went to stage two and pretensioned it, like you saw in the last video, it got way better. And in that video, I was deeply impressed with it already at that point. But I also knew I had done this kind of loosey-goosey and I showed it in the last video in detail and that this was also fairly loose and it's none of it is now. It's actually nice and tightly wrapped like a grip should be and under tension. So I added a little tension to it on purpose when I tied that and that was one thing. That's pre-tensioning the bow. Then on top of that, I added more tension here and came down a little farther like I showed. Uh, and did that nice and equally on both sides, and it's pretty sweet now. The The brace height is perfect. The shape of the bow is nice and even, and it came out nice and straight. This is an excellent bow, and really, this carbon fiber rod running the back of it is what your hand primarily rests on, as you can see here, and that is the thickest part of the bow. So it's the backing of the bow. And the rest of this is attached to the side of it to brace it. And the other two strands of the carbon fiber are mounted directly in front of it, along the front of it, to brace it all the way down to here, guys. And you can see the lengths there. It's right around eight inches right here. That was what I was saying. My hand span is eight inches, and I built it this way. So, bammo, slammo. It's just about there, and it's actually just a little more, like eight and a quarter. And then on the other side, if I check it, watch me be way out. But no, I'm not. It's I put it end to end, and it's right around eight and a quarter when I stretch it. So that's about right, maybe eight and a half. So they're pretty close. Um, I could go to tighten it up, but I don't really have to. And now, when I actually started doing this and pulling it, I'm actually getting an actual workout. I mean... This is now Bowflex, baby. This thing will pull real weight. And it actually deeply surprised me again, enough that I decided to do another video on it because it's at a whole new level now, baby. Keith out.